Right, this is number one, let's begin. Hello, my name is Matthew and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a Victoria sponge cake. So let's begin. First of all, you will need butter, caster sugar, four eggs, some self-raising flour, icing sugar, and finally, some jam. Okay, so the number one thing that you need to do is you need to leave the butter out to soften. In the meantime, just go and do whatever you do in your spare time. your butter is softened, we can start measuring. So you're going to need some weighing scales and a large mixing bowl. Now we're going to make a two-tier Victoria sponge cake and I know it's rather weird but my mother taught me to measure in ounces so that's what I'm going to do today. And it's very simple, you have an equal number of ounces and then half the number of eggs. So it's going to be eight ounces of butter, eight ounces of sugar, eight ounces of flour and four eggs. Got it? Marvellous. For any normal people using metric, a ounce is just 25 grams. That's it. It's exactly the same. So just measure out your butter. You get eight ounces. And if you're not aware, one block of butter weighs exactly eight ounces. So I'm going to put the whole thing in the bowl. With the butter in the bowl, zero your scales once more, and then add eight ounces of caster sugar. This is a lot of sugar. Okay, so the next thing that you need to do is you need to cream it together, and that that you need a fork. It's very simple. All you have to do is just get the fork and gently push down the butter and try and mix it all together. Just push down hard. and eventually it will all cream into one nice buttery mass. Just keep doing this. This is the hardest part of it. It will only take about five or six minutes. So just work hard and cream all. If you find it a bit tough, maybe your butter isn't softened enough, you could always just leave it out for a couple more minutes and allow it to soften. That should make it much easier. And eventually all the sugar will disappear. Now the result you're looking for is something like this. One is creamy, all soft, all together. If you don't think it's done yet, just keep going and eventually you'll get clear. Now, the next stage of this recipe is to add the eggs. So we've done eight ounces of butter, eight ounces of sugar, and therefore we require four eggs. The eggs in the bowl, Mix it all together. Just mix it all into a wonderful orangey goo. And you get a nice bubbly mixture with all these little chunks of butter within it. And that is exactly what you're after. Okay, the last thing to do is to add your flour. So we're going to once again bring the scales out. Put the whole mixing bowl on top and zero your scales once again. Now we're going to add 8 ounces of self-raising flour and for the best results, sift it in. It might be slightly messy, but you know, all the fun of home baking, isn't it? Right, once you've done that, just get your fork and mix in the flour into the mixture. And when you've mixed it all together, you get this beautiful sight. That is cake mixture. The cake mixture of the life. So, congratulations, you've made your mixture. Yay! Right, the next thing you need to do is get your tins and prepare them. Now, I say tins, I don't really have tins. I've got these weird things made of silicon. But, it doesn't matter. Apparently, you don't need to butter these, but I don't trust it. So I'm going to butter these tins anyway to show you how to do them. Okay. 
Okay, so just get a little bit of spare butter on your finger and just gently rub it in. And just with your finger, rub it in and cover the whole base of the tin and the sides in butter. Obviously, do this to your baking paper if you're using physical real tins. If you've done it right, it should look horrible and greasy. And that's exactly what you want. Now I'll do a second tin. Now hopefully you've got two different tins. If you've only got one, um, um, re-butter before you put your second batch in. With the tins buttered, we can start pour the mixture in. But first, it's probably a good idea to preheat your oven. So, I recommend cooking on 180 degrees or 160 if that is assisted. And while that's warming up, we need to pour the mixture evenly into these two tins. Just do it, do it by eye. Put a blob of each. Just put a blob in each tin until we run out of the mixture. smooth out the mixture perfectly and evenly, you just place it into your preheated oven. Right, and with that in the oven, you need to think about cooking times. So, it's on 180 degrees, or 160 pan, and... Now, depending on the power of your oven, it will probably take about 15 minutes ish, very, very balanced. It will vary depending on how powerful your oven is. I personally recommend just checking up on it every five minutes just to make sure it's not being burned. So that means you've got 15 minutes, so um, just go and do what you want to do for a bit. minutes and they should be done about now. Ah, oh, that must be done now. Here we are. Here we are, two delicious sponges. Now they're quite hot so maybe leave them on a heat proof mat to cool for just a couple of minutes. A chopping board would suffice. So it's time to prepare the buttercream filling, and for that you need a bowl and some butter and some icing sugar. And like before, it's very simple, we're just going to cream these two together until they form a delicious cream. Now, hopefully, your butter is softened, and once again, we're just going to add it in. Proportions again about 50-50, but this one it doesn't really matter, you just you can you go with the flow. I'm gonna add about two ounces of butter in my buttercream mixing bowl and a good shake of icing sugar. Prepare for cloud. Wow, I don't know how fast it flows. Again, with your fork, cream it all together. Don't worry if it spills everywhere, or part of them. Once again, it may feel a bit like a ball's errand, but just keep going, keep pushing the butter down, and mixing in the icing sugar, and it should all go well, hopefully. And if you've worked hard, and you've kept going, you'll be surprised to find... Ta-da! Buttercream! It's time to start the assembly. So take of your sponges, lift it out, if you've got baking paper maybe a little more tricky, but take care and then cake goes straight down, cake. Now depending on how you want it, if you want the cream to stay firmly in the middle of the cake, you probably want to let your sponges cool down properly. If you want to moisten the sponge a little, you can put it on while it's still a bit warm. 
Hi Pat, Nick Ferrer, it's Lucky Moist, it's Bellish, it's Sammy, put it on Pat. Pat, please get a big dollop, what's your cream, and put it on in the centre. Then, with a knife, just gently try and spread it out. If it's a bit difficult, you can always use some boiling water, dipping the knife in, spread it out. Spread it evenly around the sides of the cake. It doesn't have to be spread too neatly, just evenly. I want to toss a nice even layer of buttercream on the top, you can add some jam. And then just evenly spread it out. Okay, and with the filling evenly spread, and to put on the top cake. And here we are! We did it! Now as we have here, a delicious Victoria sponge cake. Quite a dirty kitchen, but it was very good fun, and we've got a delicious cake out there. Let's go try it. Ooh. Right, this is it. Moment of truth. Shall we see if it works? This is it. Look at that. Right? Hmm. I know I'm completely biased, but this is really good. Mmm. That is a nice pick. Mm. Yummy. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. This is my first ever video, and I hope to make more in the future. If you have any um, comments or questions, um, either leave them down below, or you can tweet me. I'll put my link in the description. If you've got anything you want me to bake, just send me a send me a link, and I'll try and do it. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.